Hello everyone and welcome to this video. It's November 11th, it's reporting date for the ADA Group. Our management has already presented the financial figures earlier this morning. Now I would like to give you a brief summary on the key financial highlights and the most important topics within our third quarter. By way of introduction, I am Sebastian Lehmann, Head of Investor Relations here at the ADA Group. Before we get started, please carefully read our legal disclaimer. Let us begin with an overview on the market environment. Throughout the last quarters, we have seen a continued global economic recovery, whilst on the other hand side, rising volatility occurs as inflation increases and supply chains are partially disturbed. Looking at the automotive industry a little bit more special, we see a heavy impact by the supply chain restraints. To give you a figure, current estimates say that around 10 to 11 million cars will not be built in 2021 as a matter or as a result of missing parts. How does this now transfer into our market for engineering services providers? Well, first of all, in the third quarter, we have seen a very, very sound utilization. This high utilization is based on the very good order intake we had in the first two quarters of this year. Moreover, the number of RFQs in our market is still very high. Some of these tenders in the market have an extraordinary high volume. On the other hand side, we see more and more a change in the behavior in some of our clients as supply chain restraints at the OEM lead to a decreasing dynamic in the order placement process at engineering services providers. So in Q3, we had a lower than initially expected order intake. In combination with a still present elevated pricing pressure, we remain cautious for the short term, but very optimistic for the midterm as the overall market leads to change, change in the automotive itself, change in our industry, and finally, change is our business and drives our business. So we remain very optimistic midterm. Let us go over and see what this means for our financial figures. Here are the key highlights. Our revenues are up to 506 million euros after nine months, 4.8% growth. In the third quarter, the growth was even higher with 15.1%. All of our segments were growing dynamically. The adjusted EBIT was at almost 24 million euros, corresponding to a margin of 4.7%. Within the third quarter, all segments have been profitable as well as they have been in the second one. The margin in the third quarter was particularly positive with 7.6%. We have seen a very strong growth in our unit for software and digitalization. This is not a segment which we are reporting on. It is more a transversal unit consisting of more than 500 specialists from all of our three segments. This unit has seen a growth of more than 20% within the first nine months of this year. Overall, we see this as a big opportunity, but also as a proof that our strategy of digitalization is evidently the right one. In the third quarter, we have opened our new engineering hub in Munich. This is our first site where we have implemented a modern working environment consisting of a shared desk concept, but also modern working spaces, which increases the flexibility, the creativity, and the team spirit within our employees. We have also opened a new electrics electronics test center in Shanghai in close proximity to our Chinese subsidiary. This is the next very important footprint for us to enlarge our presence in the Chinese market. This is a market not only of the present, but also of the future for the ADA group. And we will continue to build our footprint there. Let's go a little bit more into the details of the third quarter. When we look into it, the adjusted EBIT, you see an increase of more than 30 million euros compared to last year. As I said, the margin in the third quarter was at 7.6%. This is the highest margin that we have been posting for more than three years. So we have already exceeded the pre-crisis level. Looking at the three segments, we see that after nine months, we have vehicle engineering and electrics electronics are both comparably at the same level, whilst production solutions is still a little bit behind due to the very weak first quarter this year. But as Q2 and especially Q3 have been profitable again, this segment is also evidently on the right track. Looking at the headcount, we see that the overall headcount decreased year over year by almost 140 people. But quarter over quarter, we started to rehire and we are up by about 110 people. This is owed especially to the high growth in our segments, vehicle engineering and electrics electronics. 
We will continue to do so over the next month, according to the market recovery. Looking at the CapEx, you see that the overall CapEx is slightly up compared to last year. The CapEx currently levels at about 2.6% of our revenues, and we expect a further increase over the coming months as we continue to invest into our digital infrastructure. The trade working capital has gone up by about 40 million euros year over year. Last year, when the corona pandemic hit us, we decreased our trade working capital and were at a very, very low level of just 4.7 million euros. Now where the market is coming back and we see growth in our market again, we are building up trade working capital step by step. You see it on the right hand side and the trade receivables and we will continue to do so according to the market recovery. And this building up of working capital, of course, transfers into our cash flows. So after nine months, our cash flow on the operating, but also on the free cash flow side are both negative, but the third quarter in particular was positive with a free cash flow of 13.4 million euros. For the complete year, we nevertheless expect a negative free cash flow as we have already communicated at the mid of this year. Before we come to our outlook, let us finally have a view on our net financial debt. At the end of September, our net financial debt, including leasing, is at around 155 million euros. Without leasing, we are at just 4.7 million euros net financial debt. This corresponds to a net gearing of around 4.2%. Moreover, we had more than 100 million euros of available credit lines at the end of September. So our company is financially strong and stable and well prepared for a further growth in our market. So finally, let us come to the outlook. We haven't really changed our outlook since the mid of this year. So we still expect a revenue increase for the full year in a range of around three to 5%. We have slightly adjusted our estimate for the adjusted EBIT and are now expecting to reach the upper end of the range of around three to 4%. However, this assessment remains largely dependent on further developments in global supply chain disruptions, as well as the Corona pandemic. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for watching this video. If you do have any questions left, if you require a call or a meeting, please feel free to contact me at any time. I will be more than happy to help you in any way. Thanks everyone and have a good day. Bye-bye. Hi there, since you watched this company video until the end, I'm guessing you liked the video. And that's probably because we work very hard to create the most engaging and added value content for you. If you're a company and want to find out how we at Seat 11A can make a company video with and about you, please email us at content at seat11a.com.